if you take on the alt-right, you will lose. And you'll, you'll look pretty fucking stupid at the end of it. And here's why. We in the alt-right ceased caring about social acceptability some time ago. And we are, as a result of that, quite sometimes quite brash and mindlessly offensive, sure, but also we are looking for the truth. We are courageous. And we are speaking the truth. By contrast, you in the skeptic community, quite frankly, are a bunch of lying, ignorant, cowardly, beta, weaklings. We are ready for you. Believe me. Oh boy, we've got an internet war. There's nothing more exciting than watching LARPers on both sides go at it on the digital landscape, hurling insults like cannonballs across social media, gathering their forces together on YouTube to put out a hot new video to take down the other motherfucker. And this saga? This saga has been one of the larger battles in that internet war between, as Millennial Woes puts it, the alt-right and the skeptics, the skeptics, the skeptics, the skeptics, the s That's right, the skeptics. That's a Bunty King pictured here with his adoptive family at the tender age of eight. There's been a little bit of a heated conflict between the two groups, and Kraut was seen as a general among the skeptic forces trying to take the battle to the alt-right. Now, we've covered a lot of stuff, a lot of the dirty details of what went down in Kraut's server. Talked about the origin of what started it all. And we talked about a few of the offshoots from the personalities which inhabited that server. A server, might I remind you, that was stock full of YouTube academics. My academics. And individuals that have watched the sixth season of Rick and Morty. Because my IQ is extremely high. They had some firepower behind them, but they just couldn't win the fight fair. They needed to get dirty. They needed to smear their opponents. We talked a little bit about it in the second video, the super secret 24-hour operations that they were running across the internet. Who can forget the captivating Tom Clancy-esque spy saga of Tilly Law? A, ge a genius idea by a mastermind puppeteer. Nobody could see through that. <laughs> Even though everything was misspelled, she's still a highly intelligent chemistry student. But we only really scratched the surface. I saved the best part for last. In this finale, we're going to talk about the main issue with the server, the thing that really brought it to a head, got the public's attention, and basically led to Kraut self-exiling himself from the internet. And to do that, I need to introduce you to Coach Red Pill. Now, Coach Red Pill is a YouTuber that makes videos that lean to the right, as you probably could surmise from his username. And if you're not familiar with his videos, you're probably familiar with his use of cameras. At least if you've posted on 4chan within the last two weeks. You'll know it when you see it. It's Coach posting. Now, Coach was no friend of Kraut. In fact, you could say their relationship was downright antagonistic. Coach was very open about his opinion on what he thought of Kraut releasing multiple videos within a short succession talking about his reaction to the Rage After Storm incident. And in each subsequent video, the criticism grew harsher and harsher. Now, these sorts of criticisms and videos aren't inconsistent with Coach's video style. In fact, he released videos even earlier than this, taking shots at the skeptic community. But I think what really got Kraut's attention were the ones that were personally addressed to him. I could almost nail it down to a specific thing that I think really set him on the path of wanting revenge against Coach Red Pill. And the reason I didn't care for his voice is that I realized something almost immediately when I listened to him. He's faking his accent. You see, the kind of accent that he uses, or he tries to use rather, is known as RP, received pronunciation. Now, received pronunciation is not a regional accent. In point of fact, it's a social accent, if you will. It's the form of speech that British upper class kids learn in private school, usually boarding school. He's faking his accent. Now, why would that be important? What about that would bother Kraut so much? Well, to understand that, you need to know a little bit about Kraut. 
From what I understand, he was initially a high school dropout who had to go to night courses to get his degree. And so there's a bit of a chip on his shoulder. And here comes this guy, Coach Coach Red Pill, saying that he's a phony, that he's not as intelligent as he's presenting himself to be. We've all heard Kraut's statements for the last couple of months about his YouTube scientists, about my academics, about all those biology books he's reading. He desperately wants to put forward the facade that he is well-educated and highly intelligent. And yet, here comes this YouTuber who basically calls him out and says, you're faking your accent to try to sound more intelligent than you really are. Imagine how pissed off Kraut would be. Again, this is the same man that created a super-secret server to hunt down the alt-right and right-wingers because people didn't take his reaction to Rage After Storm particularly well. He's the sort of individual that once you slight him, he doesn't forget it. If he has a vendetta, he'll take that to his fucking grave unless he puts you in one first. If I find the guy who dogs my brother, I will squeeze the life out of his throat. I will stay until I watch you burn. And I will force feed the ashes of your children down your this throat. Is this genuine? That isn't intimidating at all. It's not threatening at all, uh, is it now? Is this genuine? A boot stomping on your face. So what does this building animosity lead to? What, what actually ends up happening after Coach Red Pill does this? And what's Kraut has his server established to go to war with the alt-right? Well, that's where the doxing comes in. Oh boy, can, you, can I use that word? Is it doxing with one X or two Xs? Are we talking private information or hacked information? There's been so many different definitions bandied about by all the individuals that are involved in this about what constitutes doxing. It seems everybody has a different fucking opinion on it. But you know what? Because this is Kraut we're talking about, let's go with his definition on it. So Kraut, was there doxing going on in your server? As many of you are aware, three months ago, I have opened up a Discord server with the intention of gathering together biologists, chemists, and other academics with YouTubers willing to make videos on race realism. About a week ago, we were suddenly confronted with accusations that we were running a doxing platform. We were stunned by those accusations and we did not know where they were coming from, consequently acting abrasive and angry towards those who leveled the accusations. We have now, through the help of The Guardian, who you may know on Twitter as the Guardian underscore 002 and who was also a member of our server learned that a member was in fact gathering docs of people. Zef, who was introduced to me by Liz who I had known for two years and trusted that she wouldn't be coming in here with malicious intentions. Well there you go. There were docs on that server at least according to Kraut but he didn't do nothing. He's a good boy. He's innocent. A sweet little Germanic angel. It was all that fucking alien's fault. That alien of ill repute and his lady Liz. I mean, you heard it yourself in the apology video. Except for the fact that it was complete and utter bullshit. And another attempt by Kraut to misinform people and throw others under the bus to save his own ass. So let me paint you a picture of the most autistic shit I can. I hope you're ready for this to get gayer than you thought possible. I'd like to call this... Operation Chocolate Starfish. There aren't going to be any Tilly Laws involved, but I'll try to keep it interesting. This all begins back on November 3rd with this conversation between Kraut and Zev. I have Coach Red Pill's real name. Zev. Whoa, how did you get it? Kraut then invites him into a private conversation. Weeks later, on November 19th, it's happening. Jim's friends are on the case. We now have to sit back. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. What if Zev doctored that image? How do we know that that's actually legitimate? How do we know it's real? Well, you're going to hear audio that confirms this later on, but let me continue with my timeline. The very next day, Jeff Holliday and Coach Red Pill get into a bit of a tiff on Twitter. You can hear them talking about this encounter on a Worski live stream. My claim is that you've sent a tweet to CRP at some point in your life which included the first name on coach, of Coach Red Pill in a way that was threatening of the, of the fact that you knew about him more than he wants to be exposed, that incorrect. you knew private information about him. Is that correct? correct? No, incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. I called him Gus. His name is not Gus. So Coach Red Pill, is that true that your name is not Gus? Yeah, because he uh, misremembered it and thought my name was Gustavo. It's not Gustavo. But in another uh, tweet, he used my actual first name. Uh, and in oh, yeah. subsequent okay. tweets, yeah. he, uh, he referred to a um, 
a former and incorrect, uh, uh, a former business associate in a way that was suggestive that he had embarrassing information and intended to use it to smear me. JF accuses Jeff Holiday of having Coach's real name and information and trying to intimidate him with it on Twitter. Jeff denies this, but Jeff not being very smart, apparently, within a matter of, I'm not fucking joking, within like 15 seconds, changes his fucking story and says this. Jeff, why did you use the word Gus? Does it mean something in English, Gus? Gus? No, I just used Gus. And yeah, it was to infer, like, dude, I do know who you are, but fucking Jesus Christ, will you leave me alone? Jesus Christ, Jeff, pull yourself together. At least be consistent in the bullshit you're telling people. Don't fucking flip-flop within 15 seconds of yourself. And the tweet they're referring to is archived, and that went out on November 4th. So on November 3rd, Kraut has Coach Red Pill's information. Within 24 hours, Jeff Holiday is so fucking excited, he tweets it in a subtle, intimidating way at Coach Red Pill as a kind of, aha, I gotcha. Hey, Jeff, what's your uh, personal opinion on people that use information about somebody they don't want out there in an effort to intimidate them? Do you have, do you have any deeply held beliefs on that? <clears throat> What do you think of doxing? If you dox somebody, you're a cunt. Is revealing somebody's name the same thing as doxing? Subjectively, maybe. Um, that depends. It depends on the context. Depends on a few different things. But I will say, intentionally revealing somebody's name who didn't want it is an intimidation tactic. And if you do it, you're a cunt. Oh, so I guess you're a fucking cunt, huh, Jeff? I guess, I guess you're a fucking cunt. Now, fast forward to November 19th, when Kraut says, Jim's friends are going to take care of it. Oh, hashtag Jim knew. Hash, hashtag Jim New. What, what is he referring to? Well, he's talking about a thread up on a forum called Kiwi Farms, a thread that was started by Fedora Man Man, who happens to be King of Pole. King of Pole is friends with The Guardian, and that thread went up on November 18th. Now, this is why it gets really gay, because this is what I honest to God believe Kraut was trying to do with Operation Chocolate Starfish. Kraut wanted to use the docs he had on Coach Red Pill. But he didn't want to openly do it himself, so he needed an intermediary. He brings in the Guardian and says, I have this information. The Guardian takes that information and hands it off to a friend of his, an acquaintance, King of Pole. King of Pole then puts the information out publicly on Kiwi Farms. This ends up giving Kraut some deniability. Because King of Pole isn't in the server, you can't connect him to it. The only way to do that is to know that King of Pole knows Guardian, and Guardian knows Kraut. So what happens if that scenario plays out? Well, this is where Zeph comes in. Zeph has a bad reputation for doing underhanded, dirty shit to people. And what better fall-down guy would exist for that particular scenario? So, say, somebody figured out that King of Pole got the information from Guardian, and Guardian got it from Kraut. Well, Kraut can put up an apology video, just like he did, that said, Zeph did it, not me. What he wasn't counting on was the fact that Zeph had screen caps and audio recorded of Kraut, they completely fucking tank his bullshit excuse. If you look back at those operations they were trying to run, every single one of them involved manipulating people. Each and every one of them was trying to fool others and get them to do their bidding. And this falls in line with what I believe Kraut really wanted to do. He wanted to use the Guardian. He wanted to use King of Pole. He wanted to use Zeph and Liz and anybody else he could in his autistic war against the alt-right because he was fucking angry. Angry and embarrassed, and he would do anything it took to get back at them. And that willingness to use any tactic to win extends far beyond just Coach Red Pill or even the flagging of the videos of Jean-Francois. It goes into the territory of lying in bed with your enemy, with those goddamn SJWs. I, I see... Old uh, I see, Spiner, that you found the video. Yes. Why I'm are you this shit. online? Just, I'm, I'm just gonna... I mean... Um, Spiner. Spiner. Spiner, oh, please. Yeah. I'm not sure if you could hand this over to your SJW friends. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. No. Um, they're, if you they're, do they're it... Not, um, they're not in favour of doxing. I, um... No, it's not even a dox, but if you do it, don't tell them you have it from me. Because I can't I can't afford this shit. I found it by coincidence. I thought it was funny. I added it into this thread. Let that uh, let that sink in for a minute. Kraut was going to have Spinosaurus get in touch with his SJW friends to use information Kraut provided to target somebody. 
Even fucking Spinosaurus says, we don't dox, we don't do that. And yet Kraut is trying to convince him to do it for him. You can hear the worry in his voice. He doesn't want the dirt coming back on him. It's another example of this attempted manipulation of other people to get them to do his dirty work and using them as a tool to that end. So our poor little cucky alien... Oh, did, did I forget to mention Zeph is a cuck? How do you feel about the fact that Wiz is living with her ex-husband? Yeah, and you're not sure. most likely, if reality is a thing, uh, taking the dick from him. What, what's your opinion on that situation, Zeph? Okay, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you guys an honest answer. I'll, I'll, I'll give you Schmeckle an honest answer. Mm, one, one, I don't I don't really care for Fred being there, honestly. But th then again, we have an emotional connection, not a sexual one. That emotional connection, it's long distance. We love each other in our souls. That's a that's a bit embarrassing. And if you're wondering just what it is that Zeph and Liz have against Jean Francois, remember she was the one saying flag that video. Well, this clip might have something to do with it. Zeph seems to be in a uh, loving relationship with another YouTuber named Liz Reptil, <laughs> who I've been knowing for years. And I will say that uh, this uh, Liz once offered me to go fuck her. Zeph is a cock. His uh, girlfriend literally offered me to have my dick inside of her. My God, Zev, how many people are fucking cucking you? Do you, do you keep a tally board above your bed? Like, like holy shit, man. Maybe get a new girlfriend. Just a, just a friendly tip. Nevertheless, it appears that Zeph was intended to be a fall guy. Not even Jeff Holiday, whose story has changed from time to time, was the one that originally found it, regardless of what he says. And you're able to come to this conclusion based on the conversation that Kraut had with Sargon. Now, the following conversation is just fucking amazing for a whole host of reasons, which we'll get into after we listen to some choice clips. But I want to give you a feeling of the dynamic between these two, the relationship between Kraut and Sargon, and how that comes into play later on. Fuck this shit. I'm going to turn up my sandboxes. You will be able to hear what Sargon's saying. And okay. remind yourself, you can whisper into my ears, but just whisper into my ears. What do you, what do you mean? You're, you will be the only one that's on Sargon, you mean? Yeah, and we'll, we'll be advising him. Yeah, because Sargon insists that I'm the only one who talks to him. But but what? Okay, so so what exactly is this? Is this live or is it recorded? It, I think it's recorded. It's, All right, hold on. Yeah, let's no, assume no, useless, no useless conversations. Um, like I'm gonna have to audio, 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 audio. Where's the fucking audio? <laughs> hey hey, uh, I'm I'm having a brief audio issue. I just quickly need to. Uh, fuck. Fix it. Ah, ah, shite. So at the very mere mention that the Don himself is calling up Kraut, he flips his shit. He needs to gather together all his YouTube scientists, all those academics, so they can whisper sweet little nothings in his ear. Because he's, he's dealing with the big guy. And God knows Kraut is scared shitless of that. Are you echoing? No, no, you, you seem fine. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, um... So what is this exactly about? Is this the Uzulu thing? Oh, it's the whole thing, really, to be honest. Hmm. Well, if it's also about the JF thing, I can only repeat what the people I'm working with have told me. No, 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 it's not going to be about the science, obviously. I mean... No, the, the reasons why I don't debate JF. Well, is it alright if I record this? Because this is important, and I... I think it's just better to well, be honest. Okay. That's a bit of a strange reaction, I'd say. You know, going into a conversation with somebody you know, you're friends with on Skype, and then saying, I need to be able to record this, but let's find out what's on Sargon's mind. So let's talk about what's happening, because I find all of this honestly kind of perplexing, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why you are engaging in the sort of culture war tactics the SJWs engage in against the alt-right. And I've said to you repeatedly, privately, that you shouldn't do this. This is a waste of time, and it's not a good thing to do. And you are doing it anyway, so I'm, I'm curious to know why you're doing it. I, I really don't see the advantage. I, I have to ask, what exactly do you mean with cultural tactics? Well, you know, what? digging up people's pasts, trying to uh, sort of smear them to make them look bad, things like that. 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Come on. No, I, I honestly have no idea what come you're talking about. Come on, man, come on. No, you have to give me a specific example. Hello? Okay, like finding Coach Red Pill's past. Like th this sort of thing. Like digging up. Who, who are the other people? There are, there are other people that you've. Um, what the fuck? You know, you've been digging stuff up on them and stuff. And it's like, I don't, I don't see the point in any of that. Once again, we have Kraut just outright fucking lying. I mean, it's a, it's a common theme that we've seen throughout every one of these videos recounting everything that he's done. It's manipulation and deception interwoven with one another. And here he is in a conversation with Sargon, somebody you're going to find out that he shared information with, denying that he had any information. I, these people are not very intelligent. Sorry about that. Right. So You, you kind of ambushed here, me, me here with that, didn't you? No, I don't think so. I think this is what you've been doing. Well, I can, uh, I can explain to you exactly what I've been doing. I've been in a server on Discord mm -hmm. with mainly a group of chemistry students and biologists going through papers. That's the main thing I have been doing for weeks now. Okay. And that's weeks. Fine. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> like saying things like, like you, you've, you know, you've said that you've had Ryan f information or something. Oh, that's, that's, and... that's, that's something completely have f information. Um, do you know who f is? Like no, I, I there, there's care. something important. The thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I... I don't care either. I specifically address him as alternative hypothesis in my videos because that is what his fucking name is on yeah, YouTube. I don't the, bring the, up I don't bring up the things that he did in the past in my videos. So not only does it extend beyond Coach Red Pill, but now they're talking about alternative hypothesis having information on him as well. And Sargon seems to be aware of this. He seems to know that Kraut is gathering together this information, that he's going to use it. As Sargon repeatedly will say, it's it's morally wrong to do this. Okay, but I, I, I think you're downplaying this, right? Um, because I think you've gone into culture war mode. And I just want to say that, like, there's, like, from, from, a, from a, a moral position, I don't see this as being moral good. I see this as being moral are evil. The alt right are a weak fringe group. They, they, it doesn't matter if they appear to be bad people. So it's a pointless exercise. I don't see it as a pointless exercise. We agreed on this okay. in the past. Yeah. It, it is a pointless exercise. And the thing is, I also don't see it as a moral good. It's not morally good. So Kraut and Sargon have this conversation. Kraut shares the audio with everybody in his Discord server so they can give him tips on how to win Sargon over. Sargon is apparently recording it for his own protection in regards to what they're discussing. But a few facts come out. Kraut has this information. Sargon is aware that Kraut has this information. And Sargon feels that it is morally wrong what he's doing. So what was the reaction? What was the fallout once the call ended? How did Kraut and his Discord buddies react to Sargon's statements and his viewpoint on what they were doing? Fuck me. I, I think oh. it sounds like, if I if, if, if wow. I may, it sounds like um, me, Sargon might that. be losing a... Oh, yeah, I, I, I can just say fuck Sargon from now on because I, I just don't fucking Jesus trust the guy. fucking Christ. No, he's just, he's, he's just losing faith in this thing. And here's the thing. Uh, when it comes to oh, JF, shit. JF is... He, he, <laughs> he is using fallacies... Expert. No, 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 and no, no, he's, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He's the, gaslighting the, the, the skeptic Redpill, community. The Coach really. Redpill stuff. I shared it with Sargon in a common interest saying, I won't publish this. I think you should know about this. And I showed it to him. Mm -hmm. And now he's ambushing we, me with it to make some kind of point on YouTube. Jesus Christ, he's burying me. Yeah, fuck Sargon. I don't trust that guy. He's going to bury us in a grave with a horse head with trout written on the gravestone. You don't fuck with the stepfather and live. Real quick, guys, real quick, because I'm, I'm really hungover and I, I, can't, I can't keep this up because i got to lay back down. But obviously, if, if you need me to help talk to Sargon and Carl, let me know. But the thing you have to remember about Sargon when this comes up, and this is the most important thing you have to remember, is that Sargon is a political activist. Sargon is not a scientist. He doesn't even understand how these conversations are even supposed to go. He's being naive and... It, it, it's just, it, 
He's being gullible. So he's a retarded, naive, gullible idiot, apparently. Oh, and uh, fuck him, because you can't trust him. Untrustworthy, gullible, fucking retarded idiot who's naive. Uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff. Oh my god, the fact that I gathered this data and Coach Red Bull is going to bite me in the fucking ass, because he knows I gathered it. Where the fuck is Jeff Holiday now? And that would be one of the sound clips that exonerates Zeph. He knows that I gathered it. He didn't say, Jeff Holiday, you gathered it. He didn't say, Zeph, you gathered it. Kraut is admitting he's the one that found the information, and he shared it with fucking everybody. He shared it with people in that Discord. He shared it with Sargon of Akkad. Kraut, you need to let him know that any information that you gathered on Coach Red Pill was a background check on his credentials and who he is as a person. That is all. It wasn't meant yeah. for tactics to be used against him in a SJW way. It was to verify his credibility as yeah, as, the, as, 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 as somebody who speaks Jeff, in that field Jeff, of expertise. Jeff, 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 the data I gathered on Coach Redfield is now being used against me, essentially. They think what do you I, mean? That's the thing. Like The first thing he brought up, why are you gathering private information, like, for example, on Coach Redfield? It's not private information. And here's the thing, he, 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 he claims I've been doing the same with Ryan Falk, etc, etc. That I'm gathering private data. And What's private about Twitter. Ryan Falk? I can yeah, Google Brian Falk every, 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 I, I have to tell you something, Jeff. I, I shared the things that I got on Coach Red with Sargon of Akkad. Yeah, so? And he's now accusing so me of doing SJW tactics. That's not SJW tactics. That's fucking. That's vetting. That's vetting somebody who's talking as a public figure. Exactly. That's something every news organization does. That's something every fucking YouTuber does. That's absolutely fucking preposterous. The only reason why anybody gives a shit about any of this is because they're positioning themselves as being persecuted. This is that is a fucking SJW tactic. Oh, my persecution. Oh, my persecution. This right. is why it's wrong. No, nice what's one. wrong actually is what's wrong is defrauding. A fucking economist. What's wrong is being a large piece of shit that has to hide from social media for three years. So once again, Sargon of Akkad is just a fucking moron that doesn't understand how the internet works. This wasn't doxing and smearing. They were doing a background check. But naive, gullible, dumb fuck Sargon just doesn't really understand that. But do you know what the most fucking remarkable thing about all of this is? is that even though Sargon was in that call with Kraut telling him it's morally wrong to use information to smear somebody, that she should attack their argument, that he didn't want any part of this, Kraut still somehow succeeded, because Sargon of Akkad released a video about Coach Redpill, in which he shares the information that Kraut gathered. So this was posted to Kiwi Farms. Now, it says King of Pole posted it, and we verified it. And if it is King of Pole, the one I know, hey man, how's it going? How you doing? long time no speak um like i don't know whether it is i don't know who it was actually posted this it could just be someone with a similar name or something like that i don't know but um this is just all public information as you can see it's youtube videos it's him archives it's it's nothing that's not already public it's just been brought together on this post and if you look in the video description you'll see the Kiwi Farms link. The Kiwi Farms link that was put up by a proxy of a proxy of Kraut. So I guess in a way, and this is the weirdest fucking thing about it, Kraut succeeded. Do you remember Operation Mincemeat? It was a plan that Kraut and the people in his Discord had cooked up. Do you see the two names listed there? Thunderfoot and Sargon of Akkad. The entirety of this plan was to trick the alt-right into thinking Sargon or Thunderfoot were going to make videos. This would get a reaction out of the alt-right. That reaction would then spur Sargon and Thunderfoot into actually making those videos. They use a lie to get a reaction to make it become true. Now let's fast forward to the fallout of Kraut's Discord server and all that information getting leaked. Coach Redpill puts up a video accusing Sargon of Akkad of knowing what was going on. And in response... Sargon of Akkad makes a video. Kraut effectively used Sargon of Akkad in Operation Mincemeat. I don't know, really makes you think. Gets the noggin joggin'. One thing I've repeatedly heard throughout this entire autistic saga is that digging up information on other people and then using it isn't doxing. That a majority of the people in that Discord, in the skeptic crowd, Kraut and T and others, have all said that's not underhanded. It's a background check. They're just doing research on an opponent. And sharing that information or putting it onto a forum or even putting it into a video is completely a-okay. Well, I'm glad that Kraut feels that way. 
I'm glad Kraut is fine with me sharing publicly available information, because that's what I plan to do right now. As I'm sure you can imagine, once all this information came out and people really started paying attention to it, different areas of the internet decided to start digging into Kraut and T. They began to put together infographics, trying to find other accounts that he may have. Boy oh boy, did they fucking strike gold. Through a little bit of internet detective work and lining up personal pictures that he had posted on different forum accounts, as well as him using the same username that he used on Steam a long time ago, they were able to track down the account, the Germans are coming. And apparently they must be coming pretty fucking hard. That I don't believe. Even I own a dildo, vibrating nipple clamps, leather straps, chains, cuffs, corsages, and various other things. Vibrating nipple clamps. Never really had you pegged for that, Kraut. You always seem like a uh, sophisticated, high IQ guy. I can't really picture you chained up to a bed with electricity going through your debts. From the thread, wife wants me to have an open relationship. Meh. When in a relationship, I never bothered if she slept with other men. <laughs> oh boy. Welcome to Cucktails, everybody. Oh my god, my favorite new game on the market's Cuckhead. Starring Zeph and Kraut and T. It's the hottest shit out right now. Hey, remember that story Kraut told everybody about how he split his dick in half with an axe? You know, a totally believable story about a man somehow missing a piece of wood and opening his cock straight down the middle. I used to work in a lumber mill when I was 17 years old, and my job was there was this machine where they would put the big trees into it, and it would scrape the, um, the bark off the trees. And of course, not all the bark would go off. And my job was, after the tree went through the machine... <coughs> I had to take an axe and chip the remaining bark off the tree. And what happened was I slipped and yanked the axe into my crotch. And what? what? And sliced my cock open. <laughs> well, my, my nickname in, in the, during the remaining name, uh, years in school was, uh, what was it, Chieftain Split Cock. Apparently, that was a lie. The story's a little less interesting than giving yourself a brisk with a chainsaw. In the thread, the most amount of pain you've ever felt. A kick between the legs I got at the age of 17. It ripped my cock open, which had to be stitched together again. Funny thing was that I was so utterly fucking drunk and on pills that I didn't even notice the injury or even the pain until the blood started dripping out of my pants. For some reason, our boy here really likes to get kicked in the dick. I mean, it's a common fucking thing that keeps reoccurring throughout his life. I'm not sure if it's a prelude to something, but let's read another post. From the thread, when the need for closure is great. You certainly have more guts than I have. I was viciously abused as a child by various people in my surroundings. At the age of 12 to 13, I was almost castrated by a group of classmates who tied me to a chair and kept repeatedly beating me in between the legs with their feet and objects. At the age of 14, I was almost murdered by the same people during gym class. Wow, I wonder if all the abuse to his genitals had any effect on his sexual preferences. Oh, what do you know it did? BDSM. You know, good old Kraut tied up to a chair with nipple clamps on, getting kicked in the deck repeatedly by various strangers. All while his girlfriend's fucking some other dude on the bed next to him. Well, hey, Jim, you can't judge him too harshly. He is a paragon of progressive value. Did you see his Discord server? It was all-inclusive, allowing anybody with a different opinion to come in and say what they wanted. I am sick and tired of these disgusting sand monkey animal savages. It is time to pack them into trains and ship them back to their filthy deserts. Through being a slippery, slimy, self-centered fuck, I managed to squeeze a shitload of money out of my thick country pumpkin relatives this Christmas. More than I would ever need to cover my living costs. So I decided to donate 50 euros to Doctors Without Borders, buy some retro games on Steam sale, and buy $200 euros in pay safe cards, upload it to my account, and buy some Amazon gift cards for myself to stock up on some essential living things, like new sex toys, and the last remaining Judas Priest album that I don't own as an LP. Gotta, gotta take advantage of those stupid fucking relatives so you can buy yourself some new dildos. Totally understandable. It's the Christmas sort of thing. Well, the saga of Kraut and T is finally coming to an end. I've taken you through the history of it. What began his crusade against the alt-right, against the right-leaning neo-Nazi, race-realist, ethno-state-loving motherfuckers. I've talked about the people he gathered by his side and the things they got up to about him targeting different individuals for flagging their videos or doxing them or spreading their information, about him manipulating and deceiving everyone around him in an attempt to use them as a tool to further his own goal. It is a remarkable implosion to have watched in real time. It was uh, exciting to watch the information continually leak out as the story shifted from one day to the next. 
with the loss of his YouTube channel, his dignity, and his income. At least he accomplished his goal. Sure, he may be doing road work for the rest of his life, no longer getting a cushy paycheck from talking about Islam or feminism on YouTube once a week, but at the end of the day, I, I don't think that's what really embarrasses him. I don't think it's seeing everybody turn on him. I don't think it's having his past dug up. I don't think it's the destruction of everything that he held sacred and dear. I think what really sticks up his ass, the thing that probably bothers him the most, is that because of him, not in spite of him, but because of him, the one thing he didn't want to happen did happen. The most watched live stream at the time on YouTube was a conversation by Richard Spencer with other individuals about a white ethnostate and race realism, with upwards of 12 to 14,000 people watching. I want you to imagine, if you waged a war against somebody, and because you decided to wage a war, they ended up winning, that if you had not even engaged in the first place, this never would have happened. But Kraut let his ego get to him. He let his vengeance get to him. He let his anger get to him. And he ended up becoming not a detriment, but an asset to the enemy he saw across from himself. And that has got to stick up his ass something fucking fierce, which he probably enjoys as he's tied up getting electricity run through his tits.